So this is the bag sort video for the second bag in the K row. This contains blocks 7 through 13. And we are going to go ahead and dump it out. The K row has one four and a half inch square left and that's for K7. So that's for the first block here. And I'm going to get my book. And we're going to start obviously with K7. So here's the four and a half inch square that I labeled at the beginning when I cracked open the bag on the first bag. So I'm going to dump out my pieces, make sure that all the little tiny ones are out, and set the bag aside. And so this is a modified block. So I'm going to go to my booklet and find the seventh block. So basically, they've taken this piece and divided it up into quarters. So this should be a quick find here. And I'm just going to, as I do this, I'm going to lay some of these pieces aside in sections. I set, you know, triangles. There looks like there's a lot of triangles in this, in this bag. So I may do, I may um, pile triangles of different sizes together. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm looking for these big pieces. Okay, so here's one. They should just come out here. <laughs> They're big enough. Two. Three. And where's the last one? Man, there's a lot of triangles in here. There you go. So I just sift through to grab these. So these are the four pieces. And then I'm going to label it with my ultra fine point sharpie as k7 like i did here and then i'm going to refer to the picture and this block is background and this is focus fabric so i'm going to label these with the red dot indicating that they're focus fabrics and then i have to check my fabric for directional and this is the fabric that i have And it looks very not directional, but I'm going to look at it real quick because sometimes it, you pick up a different thing. So no, this is not directional, so I'm not going to worry about labeling arrows. So I will be bagging this up in a, in a sandwich size baggie with the label for the block. And I'm going to put my fabric in the baggie with all the pieces and move on to K8. Now we're on the K8 block, and this one has also been modified, so I'm going to refer to my book. And the modification for this is that they've taken these three pieces and made it into one piece. So I am going to sift through my pieces. I already found this big long one that goes across the whole thing. And then I'm just going to pull out some of the rectangles. They have to have an angle on this outside, so as I pull out various ones, I'll put them in piles. So here's one that goes here. So there's four more of this size. And then the triangles, you want to make sure that you line it up an edge on an edge. So that looks right. Keep in mind that triangles sometimes are not... Now, to, to this drawing, whenever it's in this drawing, they're usually 100% accurate. But when you have a drawing in the book, occasionally the triangles are just a tiny bit off one way or the other. Okay, so there we go. So I got, I got three more of this size and three more of this size to find and three more of these size triangles. As I sift through my triangles, I will compare them to this one. And some of these are very, very close. So as you can see, this is not the right size, but it's very close. So if it's not exact, it's not correct. It will mess up other blocks if you, if you just say, oh, that's close enough. There is, the, there is no close enough. It's right or wrong on these. So I will continue to sift through these and find these pieces.
So I found all the K8 pieces, and in the process I made some piles. This is still my I haven't sorted it pile over, over here. I don't know if you can see it. There's some really teeny tiny squares that got away from me and landed on the floor. So just be, be aware of those. I don't know if there's four or if there's more because I haven't sorted through this. There's also a bunch of these looking pieces with a point on one end and a flat end on the other. And then I have squares. I have double-ended arrow things, whatever you want to call them. There's a couple pentagons up in the corner here. There might be more of those, I don't know. And then I've got medium, sm small, tiny, and large triangles that may or may not be in the correct piles. And then there's some more of these in here. So there's quite a few. Now I'm gonna label my K8 pieces with my Sharpie. So I've got my K8s labeled and I started labeling my focus fabrics. I'm looking at this picture here. So this middle section and then these two pieces that, that go across, those are focus fabric. And then these outer triangles are also focus fabric. And then the next thing to do is to check to see if my fabric is directional. And at first glance, I thought that this wasn't directional. But if I turn it 90 degrees, it does change the look of it. So because of that effect, I am going to call this directional. Worst case is that it's not and I made an error. But if I, if I said that it's not and it really was, then it will look wrong when I assemble it in my block. So I'll take a ballpoint pen and make an arrow up on all of the red dot pieces as they sit in their orientation. And then, oops, these two. And then I will double check, see if I got every one of them. Yep, and now I will stick it in my bag with my fabric and move on to the next block. Next is K9, and K9 is also indicated that it's modified. The difference is, in the booklet versus this, is they've eliminated this overlap here. So, that brings it right to the edge. And this is where the tiny squares go, I think. Which will help me get rid of them. Yep, so I got these little, so there are little four little squares. And those will go here. And then I've got nine of these squares and then the big triangles, there's a couple different versions of big triangles in this bag. This is an obtuse triangle. It has an angle here of, 90, of more than 90 degrees. And there's different sizes of these. So I have to find a 90 degree triangle that's large enough to fit that section. So here's a 90 degree triangle that's large. And yep, that seems to be the right size. So I will find three more of these, and then the squares, there's different size squares. That seems to be the correct size that we're looking for. And there's bigger ones as well. So you're looking for nine of these smaller ones. And I will get this laid out. So I've come across an interesting happening. As I was loading these squares onto here, I, they weren't quite lining up. So this square fills from black to black. Seems to be a little big to me, but it may not be. So I'm going to hang on to this one. This one is slightly larger. So as I look at this, let me look, scoot this up. As I look at this, I have this one is slightly bigger by a tiny, tiny bit. And it's hard to tell just by looking at them. You have to line them up. So there seems to be two very similar squares in this bag. And this one is slightly smaller by about a 32nd of an inch. I don't even if you can see that tiny little stair step. So I bet you that this one is going to fit right. It sits a lot better in that. So you have this size square, 
this size square and this size square and this size square is very very close to this and this is where not quite not not quite right is completely wrong so there's other blocks in here that have squares that this may go to but the job right now is to make sure that we find nine of one size and so this is this size so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one of these and this is this size I'm going to go through each one of these compared to this square if it's just a smidgen bigger it goes in this pile if it's another eighth you know what is it a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch I don't even think it's an eighth of an inch if it's yeah that's like a sixteenth so if it's a sixteenth bigger then it goes over here and then this is the same size as this one so this is going to take some doing found another size this one's bigger than this one and that looks like an eighth of an inch so I'm going to stick this over here so I'm going to get as these go as, as these piles go they're getting bigger and then this one is significantly bigger and it's obvious that it is so I'll stick this in a pile down here so I still do have some in my haven't sorted it out yet pile plus the square pile So, this is intriguing. This is the smaller ones. These are the ones that are sm a smidge bigger. And there's nine of each. So it's a difficult call to make. So the next step is to find out where these squares are going to go besides into this, to this uh, block. So we have K9 that has a nine patch and I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to set the smaller and the larger. That's a relative term. It's like a 64th of an inch off. Okay, so we got K9 with a nine patch and it, we have up to K13 in this bag. So we have, nope. Here's your next nine patch. This is also modified block, so it's gonna be in the booklet, which is good because that gives you the exact thing that they cut the pieces from. So here's, let me do this. Here is this one and here is this one. I took this page out so that I only have a single page to deal with. It's folded. But if you, the more layers of paper, the more of a poofy effect you get, and then they, the papers move way too easily. Okay, so we have this pile and this pile that's just a smidgen bigger, okay? So the smallest blocks, I'm gonna take and look at this. And it fills it to the half half of the sorry. It fills it to half of the black line on every side. And here on this block, it fills in the white, but not the black at all. And I'm telling you, it's tight. This one goes over the black line on each side so it covers it completely and then here it goes to the center of the black lines so what we determined from this the ideal piece is going to fill your section from the center of these black lines because there's a thickness to each one of these lines so the center of each one of these lines so that because they each piece shares this line and that's what hap that's what these do and that's what these do to each respective so the smallest nine patch blocks are going to go on to k9 and the ones that are a smidgen bigger 
are going to go on to the, what is this, K13? Yes, they're going to go on K13. So I am going to put these that go with this way over on the side of my table because it's the very last block I'm going to do. And actually, the other side of this is K1, so I will put, there's nothing else on the back other that I need to use until then. So I will actually put this with the block draw, diagram so I know that that's for K13. So then I'm going to go back to K9 and lay out my squares now that we've solved that mystery. So these are going to be for K9. Alright, so finally we've solved the mystery of K9 and I can label my blocks as such. So I'm going to go through here and label them with my Sharpie and then I will be ready to find out which ones are focus fabrics. So I've labeled all my pieces for the K9 block and I'm going to mark which ones are focus fabric. You've got this X configuration of these five squares in the middle here that are focus fabrics. And then these big triangles outside are focus fabrics. And then it looks like, yep, these teeny tiny ones are also focus fabric. These teeny tiny squares. And then the last thing, of course, is to check for directions, directional. And this is very directional. This little bit here is is gotta be the same way. And then this little bit here has gotta be the same direction. I'm not sure what orientation I'm gonna choose. It doesn't matter right now. So I'm going to label all of these with an arrow up. And this is this is why I use different pens for everything. So in this one, I'm going to kind of overlap my K9. And if I was to use a Sharpie for that, it would just look like I slopped up the K. This is why I use a ballpoint pen for labeling my directional. Because some of these pieces are so tiny, there's not a lot of real estate to work with. So I've got all of these going on here little tiny little tiny and big okay so i got one two three four one two three four one oops missed the middle one two three four five now i can bag it up with my fabric and move on to k10 next block is k10 k10 is also modified so i'm going to go to the book and we have adjusted borders that are easier for English paper piecing. So I'm going to see that I have this. These are the weird pieces. So these are those pieces that have one flat side. Let's start up here. One flat side and a point. And there's eight of those. So those will be around my border. I have five of the double-ended arrows. One, two, three, four, and five, if I can pick up a piece of paper. <laughs> and then we have these little triangles. And the tiny, tiny triangles. Let's see here. So I got a bunch of little triangles here. Let's see if they're the same size. Okay, those are too small. And those are good the right size so these are smaller than these so we have this goes in here and we want to verify that it fits on this piece because as we know we could have ones that are almost fitting so that lines up here and there perfectly so I will call that good So I will go through here and find triangles. So, okay. Actually, I'm going to use this one to compare. So this is these, and I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those. And I need four of these. And 
these are slightly, this is slightly bigger. So if I do this this way and line up the points, it's easier to see. So if I line up the points exactly, you see that there's this, <laughs> what is that, 32nd of an inch, 16th of an inch, smidgen, whatever you want to call it, bigger. And that is going to be the ones for this part. So you've got four of this size. Let me get this in here. And this is why I use my stiletto because I can make sure that they fit exactly as long as they're in the right position. I'm trying to get these positioned next to each other without knocking them with your finger is very frustrating. So this is one of these. I'll stick this where I had this other one. I like to fill in spaces that I don't have to worry about moving pieces again. So I'm going to go through here and find all these pieces. Okay, this one's slightly bigger, so it's going to go on the outside. So I found all the pieces for K10. These triangles, there's four more of the same exact size, so they must go somewhere else. So there is eight of these, and there's ten of these, but just use four of them and set them aside. I'm sure they go for another block somewhere. So I'm going to label each one of these with K10 with my Sharpie. So now it's time to label for focus fabric. So I'm going to look at my picture. Oh, of course. <laughs> so the arrows, it's got to be some crazy fabric. These, these double-ended arrows are background. These weird shapes on the outside are background. These triangles are focus fabrics. And the pieces scooted when I was labeling them. And I apparently missed one when I was labeling it. This is why you double check before you put it in the bag. Okay. So those four, the big squares. Well, they're not big, but the squares in the middle. Those four squares. And then, okay. So apparently the double-ended arrows on the outside four corners are background but this one is focus fabric. And then these are background. So that means that the ones that are, the double-ended arrows that are background are surrounded by focus fabric triangles. I am pushing this everywhere. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have outside triangles, squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight triangles, and then this middle section. Looks good. Now we check for directional. This is my fabric for this block, and I'm going to call that not directional. But I think it might be with the flowers. Yeah, the flowers are all facing up towards the sun. The leaves are not directional, but the flowers are. So it is directional. So then I go through and mark these with my arrow. And then I can bag it up. Onward to K11. K11 is again modified. And so we have this chart. They have changed the way the middle works. So you have pentagons and triangles and a square in the center. So I've got my pentagons over here. I have one square of one size, which I'm assuming is this one. Yep. That was when I sorted my squares for K13 and the other one that was screwy, what, K7 or something like that. So these are my outside edges of the center square. And then I have four triangles of this size-ish, which I'm assuming is what they're for. Yep. So the other four triangles that we just used in the last block, well, the other four triangles of the same size that we used in the last block are for this block. And then I'm going to go through my right triangles, because I still have a bunch of obtuse triangles. I'm going to go through my right triangles and determine which ones are the right size for this. This seems to be the one for these. 
and then I need to find these. And that seems to be that. I'm going to set these down here so I can measure the other triangles to make sure that I get the right sizes if there happens to be different sizes. And then I have four squares of one size and four squares of another size. I have these four squares which are clearly too small. And then I have these four squares which are the correct size. So these are my corners. And I will go through and sort my pieces out. So I started sorting my triangles and I wanted to point something out. This triangle has the correct length on one side. This side is shorter than the other side. So you got one side that's runway that's too short. I'm sorry. You got this one that's way too short and very obvious but this side is the right size. So make sure that you have the triangles that are that are equal on the legs of the right triangle. These are going to go to probably K13, but we'll see. So I'm going to set these in one pile as I go. So I've got all my K11 pieces laid out, and now as per normal, I will sit here and label them with K11. So I've got all my pieces labeled. Now I'm going to try to, we're going to look at the focus fabric. So we have background pieces are going to be these triangles here. So that means these outer triangles and these corner squares are going to be focus fabrics. So we'll label those. And then from the center section, you've got the center square and then the triangles as focus fabric. So we got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then all four triangles in the center. Okay. So then I'm going to check for directional and we don't have a directional, I don't have a directional fabric on here. You might, but I don't have a directional fabric on here. So I'm going to not worry about the arrows on this block, bag it up and go on to K12. We're on to K12, and K12 is actually not in the booklet. It's not modified at all. So we're going to work directly from the book on this one. It's the only block in this bag sort, that is. So I've got one rectangle that's going to fit right there. And then I've got two large obtuse triangles. So I'm going to take my two largest obtuse triangles. I'm assuming they're these and place these here and here and then I have weird shaped triangles they're right triangles but they got one leg one size and another leg another size so we just went over that and let's see what we got here this side yep and then check the other side. Yep, so these four triangles that I set aside because they're the same, these four triangles go into this section. Just make sure that, that this is why labeling is so important because if you flip it over, you got a problem. So we're going to put these here. And I'll do those other ones in a minute. And then you've got the corners, which I'm assuming are these big right triangles to round out the outside. So I'm going to get these placed. I have three more of these, right? One, two, three. Yep. Okay. So I got these placed and now I'm going to label them. So I got them labeled and now for the focus fabric, you've got each corner two, three, four, and then these two triangles on the inside, and that's all. And then I'm going to check for directional, and I do have a directional fabric for K12. Little whirly gigs or butterflies or dragonflies or something. Maybe it's just a pattern. Not sure. But 
that is a directional print one way or the other. So I'm going to put my arrows indicating which way each piece needs to be orientated. And these are on an angle, so I want to make sure that I get as There we go. Finally, we're on the last block of this bag sort, K13. K13 has been modified as well. They've taken this unit and made it into one piece. So here we go. And this is where the other squares that were extremely similar to K9, this is where they go. So I have all these already out. So I'm gonna set those out, hopefully one at a time, not two at a time. So those are going to go there. I have a pile of right triangles with different leg size. And I'm there's no, nothing else left for this, so this has got to be the right size. So I will put those out all over this place, this uh, block. And this is why <laughs> this is why I'm supposed to be using my stiletto. Okay. And then I have four squares for the corners. And then I have four obtuse triangles for the flying geese sections, which I'm assuming those will fit as well. So it's just a matter of placing all the pieces where they belong. So all my pieces are laid out. Now I'm gonna label them. So I got all my K13s labeled. So now it's time to mark the focus fabric. So we have all the squares in the corners and the large triangles on the outside, our focus fabrics, and that one. And then we have these four squares in the center. I think that's it, yep. And then last but not least, we check for direction. <laughs> and I would say that yes, this is directional. So let me put some arrows on it. There's nothing question mark about that. So I'm going to mark these with my arrows and then I'm going to bag it up and I will be done with the second bag sort of the K row paper pieces.